Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is my thumbnail. <laughs> this person is a gigot viewer. <laughs> uh, we're going to be going through Game Rant's list of the greatest isekai of all time. I've never really thought about what the greatest isekai of all time is. They're all equally shit. This is like getting super competitive over ranking like shows is I feel like something only shonen fans do the most. You don't you don't see someone being like, oh, you know, I kind of preferred Fruit Basket over Kaguya Summer as a romance. And no nobody's losing their fucking mind over that, you know? No, nobody's losing their mind over that. First up, we have Cautious hero. The hero is overpowered, but overly cautious at number 28. Okay, I watched Cautious Hero. I enjoyed it. Wouldn't, wouldn't really write home about it. <laughs> Fake isekai fan, bro. <laughs> number 27, Grimgar. This person actually knows their isekai because Grimgar, I think, was a pretty damn good isekai. Grimgar came out fucking ages ago. You see these groups get transported to another world and they have the hardest time just beating up the most simplest monsters. They are fighting for their lives. I'm fighting for my life! Just to kill a goddamn goblin. Goblin Slayer could never, man. <laughs> Average Genshin player fighting Hilly Chills. <laughs> Trash taste TTRPG in a nutshell, bro, bro. If I got isekai I'd die in a f***ing second, man. Don't worry about it. Number 26, Demon King from today. Who? This came out before I even became close to evolving into an isekai trash, trash man. Me. Maybe this person knows isekai more than me, man. One day, Yuri sees a classmate being harassed by bullies. Thanks to his intervention, his friend is able to escape, but unfortunately, Yuri becomes the new yada 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 and gets his head shoved into a toilet. But instead of water, the toilet contains a swirling portal that sucks him into another world, largely resembling medieval Europe. What the f*** am I reading? You know what? Maybe I've discovered a new isekai today, man. Uh, number 25, Shigi Yugi. I don't know if it deserves to be 25 or I don't know, I don't know if it deserves to be higher, but it's definitely like, this is one of my first isekais before even realizing it was an isekai. Isn't that slave trader stuff again? Number 24, now and then, here and there. Okay, this one, I think should definitely be higher. If you get transported to another world, you're probably not gonna have a good time. You're probably not gonna be OP, get all the chicks and everything like that. You're probably gonna have a bad time. And a lot of isekai before this recent isekai era was all about that. It was all about being transported to this new world, being completely alien. And some of these worlds were brutal and unforgiving and fucking insane. And now and then here and there, was one of those series. It makes you question just, Frank. some people are so fucked up. It's just a bad time, man, it's just. Moving on, Rising of the Shield Hero. <laughs> My problem with Rising of the Shield Hero is that season two exists. It takes a lot for me not to finish an isekai I've, always, I've already previously watched and I could not get through season two. Let's not talk about the CG turtles. After the revenge plot gets done, you realize this is just your bog standard isekai with not really any other interesting ideas done in it or any ideas done particularly well in it compared to other isekais. Raftalia's cute, kind of. I think she's pretty basic if I'm being honest. <laughs> One thing I will say, People are a bit too eager to become Naofumi slaves. Anyone, anyone else get on that? I thought Raftalia was gonna be like, okay, here's like the typical saving a slave by letting that girl become your slave. God, this sounds, you know what? Saying it out loud sounds so bad, even though I'm just reciting what happened. It's almost as if slavery is a bad thing. I would have criticism if I thought that Shield Hero was that deep. I don't really think it's that deep. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Moving on to Digimon Adventure. All right, this one, fucking based. Uh, probably my first Isekai, now that I think about it. I'm thinking about it, it really pioneered a lot because not only was it the OG Isekai, it was also the OG reverse Isekai. Uh, one of my favorite arcs in the original Digimon was the reverse Isekai arc. And uh, when the, Digimon all started to appear in the real world. 
I remember eating that shit up at, when I was a kid. That was like the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, I was in uh, Odaiba the other day and I saw the TV broadcast building and I was like, holy shit, I'm back. 22 might be actually be a bit too low. I gotta, I gotta rewatch it. I don't know if it was nostalgia or if the original Digimon was a genuinely good show. 21, Sunny Boy. I, I, I think this person already just reading this list has watched more Isekai alone than the entire IGN staff has watched anime as a whole medium. I still think about Sunny Boy, even though it aired last year. And I think it's one of those shows that is going to like seep in. And then one day, years later, I'm gonna be like, I need to rewatch Sunny Boy. It has some of the weirdest ideas I've seen in anime. It's very, very experimental. And I remember the last episode airing and I just sat for like 10 minutes in silence, just kind of like trying to absorb everything that I just watched because it just gave, it just gave me a feeling of just, I don't know. That's the reason I need to rewatch Sunny Boy. In like five years, there's going to be some kind of YouTube video that blows up that's just like the masterpiece that you missed or something like that. That comes out in like five years. What I will say is whatever it tried to say, it made me feel things. And at the end of the day, is that not what art is for? Sometimes it doesn't matter about understanding everything. Number 20. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that remembered Gate, man. I dig it. Gate's one of those shows I'm never going to say is an amazing show but i had a f ton of fun with gay i'm not gonna lie literal propaganda it might be like literal jdf propaganda jdsf propaganda i don't really give a shit i'm there to see fucking dragons being taken down by Ata apache helicopters and rocket launchers and rpgs gay deserves to be up here i would put it on my list as well moving on oh Woo! <laughs> boy what a fucking list so far! I really, really fucking enjoyed this show. I enjoyed it so much that I played the opening theme on my wedding day. And you know what? Everyone fucking loved it. This is never gonna see a light of day, but there's this great clip of a... Uh... <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna say it. I, th I think my biggest problem with this being on the list is I'm not even sure if this counts as an isekai. Technically, it's more reincarnation into the same world rather than getting transported into another world. But you know what? It's such a banger show. I don't give a shit that much. I like it. All right, now we're in the moving on. Magic Knight Ray Earth. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I haven't actually watched Magic Knight Ray Earth. I know this is an OG show. Um, I thought it was a magical girl show. It's got robots? Oh, uh, okay, okay. So... It's an isekai, a magical girl show, and it has super robots. Okay, okay. Now you have my attention. So I'm just going to move on. Drifters. Whew. Good show. Good freaking show. Yeah, the main villain is Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Ah, oh. this, this is kind of a show where it's kind of like a battle royale from famous people from history. And it's written by the same guy who did Helsing. It's one of those shows that's so stupid, it kind of loops around and becomes fucking awesome. This is the rule of the cool done to like the total extreme. And the main villain for the show is heavily implied to be Jesus himself. I'm so sad that this did not get a second season. This is the sequel to the Bible that we needed. Yo, Jesus ain't taking shit anymore. This is the Bible too. Ascendance of a bookworm. Now we're fucking talking. Surprisingly, that's very low. Ascendance of a bookworm has really, really good fucking world building. Ironically, it's like one of the closest to Mishoka Tensei that I've seen so far, where it follows kind of like the story of this person who got reborn and it's just their life story from child from childhood and you see them grow up and everything like that i think this should be higher would it be top 10 probably top 10 i'll, I'll have to wait to see what else he's put on this list <laughs> this list ain't fucking around man 12 kingdoms oh my god this was a good show this was a good show you get this main girl who gets transported into a world that's more inspired by Chinese mythology. I, I think already, already that stands out. 
Uh, and it's just her story of like navigating in this world and kind of like fixing the problems in this world and getting involved in all the politics and stuff in this world. This is a genuinely good show. From what I remember, I, I don't know if it had like an ending ending or if it just like cut out midway. Remember back in the day when anime just ended and you'd never get a second or third season? Remember that? <laughs> Those were the good old days. <laughs> Not really. What a good show. <laughs> 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 oh boy! Are you ready? Are you ready for the hot takes? Fucking <clears throat> deserves to be there. You know what? Maybe it should be higher. Maybe it should be higher. Sword Art Online um, gets shit on a lot. And a lot of it is rightly so. The first season and probably like a lot of the second season was uh had its issues um and then a lot of people just stopped watching sword art online a lot of people just stopped giving a shit about sword art online do you know who didn't stop watching me do you know who has seen every piece of sword art online media that's come out in anime form me i have an actual fucking opinion on sword art online do you know why because i've seen all of sword art online and i'm not sorry to say that um, the War of the Underground arc is basically everything I have, like, this is the reason I watch Isekai. Progressive is the, is the first arc of Sword Art Online done well, except it's completely redone and it focuses more on Asuna. And it is also pretty, pretty good, actually. It's, it's, it's pretty fucking good. Uh, and one thing I'm noticing is all of the best parts of Sword Art Online is the parts where Kirito is not a part of it. <laughs> you know, when I think about recommending an isekai, I think, can I recommend this to someone who is not into the isekai genre? And Alicization is so close to being a show that I could recommend to someone who is not in the isekai genre and who's not into Sword Art Online. Moving on, The Boy and the Beast. All right, this is my first disagreement. It's uh, The Boy and the Beast, I think, I think is uh, Mamoru Hosoda's uh, weakest film. Mirai was the weakest, hands down. I actually like enjoyed Mirai. Uh, I, I thought The Boy and the Beast was is his weakest film so far. Didn't really impact me that much. It was, it was okay. I think he's done a lot better. Moving on, Visions of Escaflone. Can I have a banana while I talk about this? I remember really liking it. If I rewatched it, would I think it would have aged badly? Because a lot of the things that Escaflone did new, I think have now become more commonplace in anime. But you know what? We got 2D Max. Can't complain about 2D Max. I think it definitely deserves to be on this list. Uh, it also, I don't know if this is nostalgia speaking, but it holds a close place in my heart. And of course, Yoko Kano does the soundtrack to this. And God, I miss a good old Yoko Kano soundtrack. Does anyone else miss a good Yoko Kano soundtrack? What shows has she done? <laughs> oh my God. It's been so long since she's done a show that people have like forgotten who she is. Moving on, Irumakun, this high. Um, I'll be honest, haven't watched it. Heard some good things about it though. Is it that good? Too damn low, too damn high. <laughs> Twitch comments in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, now we're getting to the top 10. All right. Ooh. Ooh, that's a bit low, isn't it? Mishoku Tensei, for the isekai genre, is top three, at least. It is not even close to reaching the peak in its storytelling or the climaxes in some of the plot points it's setting up. Even then, it's done such an amazing job and it's had such an amazing adaptation. It is top three isekai of all time, at least. That is number one telling you how good of an adaptation this has gotten so far, but also number two, just telling you that the bar is just that low for Isekai adaptations, that something of this caliber is very, very easily top three Isekai of all time. Moving on, 
Saga of Tanya the Evil. I think this is too high. Like I said, I always like Isekai. That's not just in your fantasy world. I like that this takes place in more of like a world, a fantasy World War One kind of world. I don't think it did enough in the first season to me to be a top 10. I would definitely put Saga the Tanya of Evil on this list somewhere. I would, I don't think I would put it this high. It's by a studio that's called Studio Nut. Did it make me nut? Not really, but I had a good time. Moving, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <gasps> wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is my thumbnail. <laughs> this person is a gig up viewer. <laughs> Guys, I, I say it's my thumbnail. It's definitely my thumbnail. Um, <clears throat> even if uh, I think Alan made this thumbnail, but guys, it's 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 my thumbnail, guys. It's my it's my thumbnail. I won't be sending a DMCA. Don't worry. But Devil is a part timer. Um, I I don't think it would be top ten. I think season one was so good that it would have to be somewhere in the top twenty. I didn't really enjoy season two so much. I have a soft spot for any isekai that tries to do something different, and I like the fact that this is a reverse isekai. The, you know, the fucking demon lords come to our real world and work McDonald's. Simple premise, but it was a lot of fun. Konosuba. Okay, this one is definitely top 10. I remember when it came out, and I remember everyone was praising Konosuba for being such an innovative parody of Isekai, because Isekai was like getting so saturated, and this was like a nice parody of Isekai. Uh, and I was fucking seven years ago, and we've only gotten more Isekai now. <laughs> Uh, what I think works about Konosuba is that it just shows four of the worst human beings going into an isekai, just being assholes. Uh, personally, I would have put it a little bit higher. I would have put it top five. Moving on. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Frank, yes. You know, too high or too low. I'm gonna say it's about right. Maybe I've got a soft spot for slime because I really like the politics in it and I like the civilization building in it more than I do like the action. And I really, really enjoyed the fact that season two took a bit of a darker twist. A lot of isekai that I say I've watched, I haven't actually watched. I've just read the manga or the light novels for, <laughs> so actually exposed. Recently in the manga, I've been kind of getting less interested in it. A little bit? I don't know. After all the plot points in season two, that season two setup got resolved. I was like, I'm not sure where this is going to be, where this is going to be going. It's still, I'm still enjoying it, just not as much as the previous arc. Top five. At number five, we have Overlord. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Do I agree with this or not? Hmm. After like the earlier seasons, I probably would have agreed. I don't know if I've just fallen out of favor with Overlord. One of Overlord's biggest selling points is its world building. And I just don't think it has as interesting world as some of the other isekai that are coming out now. After watching season four, I just realized that maybe Overlord's not going to hit as hard as I want it to hit because it always feels like I'm waiting for something like big to happen and then something does happen and I'm just like, maybe the next climax will be better. Maybe the next climax going to hit harder. Overlord for me is, has been missing that Oh shit moment. And that's why I think I would put Overlord a bit below. I'm not saying Overlord's bad. Maybe I'm just isekai'd out because one of the big things is that when Overlord first came out in season one, it stood out a lot more than it did now. Moving on to Inuasha. Was it even that good when it aired? Are we talking the anime? I, I, don't, I don't think this is top 10. If we're gonna go some OGs, I think 12 Kingdoms deserves to be up here more. I remember watching the original anime as a kid and I could not get into Inuyasha if it aired today. 
I have a lot less patience when it comes to my anime nowadays. And I do not think that Inuyasha, the original anime, uh, has aged well at all. I think there was a lot of filler. I think it was dragged out a lot. I think a lot of nothing happened. And I don't know if later seasons are a lot better. But even remembering Inuyasha as a kid, even though I still enjoyed it as a kid, I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's top 10 isekai of all time. Moving on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe there's just not enough good isekai to choose from, guys. <laughs> no game, no life in my opinion, is not the third best isekai of all time. It is nowhere near as good as other isekai like Mishoku Tensei. But I remember finishing No Game No Life. I remember thinking, damn, had a good time. Not gonna remember much about what happened. It was a very interesting world where you have a world that is everything is resolved by games. And then you had the two main protagonists who just broke every game. And I was like, good, that was a good 13 episode ride. And then I'm waiting for season two. And then it didn't happen. The movie, I actually enjoyed less than the TV series. I don't mind if you enjoyed the movies more than the TV series, just cause it's almost like they were two separate things. Moving on. Log Horizon. God, this is another fucking overlord for me, isn't it? <laughs> I really like season one of Lock Horizon and I wanted more of Lock Horizon when season one ended. Maybe I didn't. The big difference between Lock Horizon and Overlord is I I really liked some of like the climaxes in Lock Horizon season one, uh, which stick with me. And I think Lock Horizon season one had some, still some like really, really interesting ideas and stuff like that. Holy shit, thank you very much Sato Kazuma for the 50 gift subs. Fucking fucking isekai trash men rise up, man. You know, you know, seeing the way that the world is actually built up with like Thor put into this world and then seeing the way the main character completely breaks the rules of the world that's built up. I'm like, this, this is a fucking five head show. This is amazing. This is what isekai should be. I have progressively liked it a little bit less the more seasons have gone on. There hasn't, like, nothing to me has touched season one. Season three, I'm not even gonna lie. I've not even finished season three yet. I didn't even know they had a season three, I know, right? <laughs> and I can already guess what's at number one. It's ReZero, baby. It is ReZero. I'm not gonna complain. People are calling ReZero mid. And the biggest compliment I can give to ReZero in comparison to every other isekai is people call shows like ReZero and Mushoku Tensei mid when comparing it to other anime in general. When, a, when an isekai gets good enough to be compared outside of the genre of isekai, that's how you know you have a good f***ing show. Season 1 had more holy shit things happening, but I came out of it thinking like, I don't think I'm emotionally invested in ReZero. And then I watched season two and I came out of that being emotionally invested. I didn't really think about the world building in ReZero until season two came about as well. I think it's like the best kind of combination between things we are familiar with in the fantasy genre while doing its own kind of thing in its power structures and different spells. After finishing this list, I gotta say, not a lot of good isekai, is there? <laughs> the only thing I would say in making any top isekai list is uh, ReZero and Mushoku Tensei Top 2. And those are the only two shows I'd really recommend to a person that's not really invested in the isekai genre. Maybe Slime as well. The only thing I think that is missing from this list is the spider isekai i really really enjoy the spider isekai when someone says they prefer a, sh a one shonen show or another people lose their fucking mind when people say they prefer one isekai over another no one really gives a shit and i realize why i don't give a shit it's because there's not many good shows to choose from is there <laughs> this person has watched a lot of isekai and i'm happy that they've watched a lot of isekai this is way better 
than the IGN top anime list of all time. I had very, very low expectations for a list from Game Rant talking about Isekai. I'm not gonna lie, but you have made a list that has shown the wide genre of Isekai um, from some of the more, some of the more older, some of the more obscure picks. There's a lot of good representation on the best Isekai. And you know what? I would have picked a lot of the same shows and put them in a slightly different order. What I'm most happy about is finding a fellow isekai trash man. So I'm not gonna shit on anything. Yo, when the Genshin anime comes out, that's gonna be top one, baby. Top one, let's go Genshin! <laughs> You've seen how low the bar is, okay? All you have to do is write something competent with an interesting world and you've already got a chance. Don't worry about it. But anyway, that's been it from me. If you want to check out my live streams, check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash giguk, or, you know, like and subscribe, whatever. Recreator's not there. Oh yeah, that's, that's my big thing I would have added.